I would rather spray tan my butthole than get it waxed. Smoking pot, riding a horse. It sounds fun. <laughs> it sounds fine. <laughs> it sounds scary as heck to me, but yeah, uh, could probably. be fun. I, Saddle or not, I've never been on the horse. I only ride horses side saddle anyways. <laughs> <laughs>
not understand what was happening. Why is he getting cheered so much? I don't know who that is. <laughs> and then a, a picture of Malachi Black came up, and I go, "What do you What do you think of him?" Because that's what I do. I'll just like people will show up, like, "What do you, What do you think of him?" And they're like, "Oh, okay, cool." <laughs> Malachi Black comes like, "Goes, whoa, he's scary looking." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he is. So he came back, he did his thing, he gave ice cream bars to everybody in the place, too. He finally got his ice cream bars, CM Punk. I, he, what was the story there? Because I know yeah. he said everyone gets so, an ice cream bar. But um, he finally got his ice cream yeah, bars? Yeah, back when he did his pipe bomb and somewhere, I don't know if it was the exact promo of the pipe bomb, but he was like, everybody, like John Cena has an ice cream bar and I don't. It was like a lot of like... I'm really good. I wrestle all these matches. I'm in the main event. People like me, but you don't put me on stuff. Like, I'm not on collector cups. I'm not in oh, programs. I'm not an ice cream bar. I want these ice cream bars to come back so I can be an ice cream bar. And they never did it. <laughs> it's just so, stu- so weird that they just didn't. So he bought everybody, he, in, the he bought everybody in the United Center, all 18,000 people, an ice cream bar. I his, saw someone say, on. like, Reviewed it and was like, it's very good ice cream. He did not skimp on it or something no. like that. <laughs> the ice cream place uh, tweeted about it and they said, he talked to us like three years ago and said like, I'm eventually going to come back to wrestling at some point. I don't know when, how, or where, but like, I like your ice cream. I want to do this like thing where we give out these ice cream bars. Like, yeah. I'll just let you know when it happens. And so apparently he finally was like, yeah, it's happening. And he paid for it all himself. Like, it wasn't AEW that that's, paid for it. He did, cool. he paid for them all. Yeah, that, so. that is, that's pretty cool. And they're like, yeah, we've been making it for, like, a couple, like, last week or whatever, getting ready. Like, holy shit. <laughs> that's a lot of ice cream bars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so Sam Punk, Punk is back. Like so on one hand, very good segment. Nice, nice return. Yeah. Again, I didn't. I'm not as hyped as you and the ghost are, but <laughs> certainly it was quite the moment. No doubt about that. The question will be, can he back this up? I think so. He certainly can talk. That's He hasn't lost a, a mile per hour on his fastball of talk. I think if he's smart and goes about, like, Jericho yeah. doesn't go nearly as well as he used to, but he can. St- he knows that. Right. Except when he goes for the lion's salt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he m- missed but, that one lion's salt. But, like, he... so. If, not, and, but that's the thing. CM Punk was never like a high flyer and all that. And yeah, I listened to a little bit of his media scrum. Uh, one of the things he said was that somebody asked him if he had been training. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I, I train the way I, I've always worked out. It's like the way I work out is doing MMA training or whatever, yeah. like jujitsu training. He's like, I still do that. Don't really need to go in the ring for any reason until. Like a few days before, maybe it'll He's just like, be like people are going to be upset by me saying that, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you it'll be like any other athlete. Like they're in great shape, but yeah. they're not in game shape. You yeah, know? like so, he'll get blown up quick. Yeah. But. So he said, like, I'll probably get in the ring a couple weeks or a week before the match. I guess it's a couple weeks already, but yeah, a couple days, a couple week, or like a week before the match, and start get rolling around. But then he was like. I'm not. He also said, "I'm not reinventing the wheel here. I'm not going to do any moves I haven't done before. Most likely, I'm just going to do what I always have done. Yeah. So, which if is that's what he the needs case, to do. I mean, then he will be fine, probably. So, yeah, he doesn't need to do anything different than what he used to do. It is always fun though, like when Dustin Rhodes does a, co- uh, a code red or something like that, and you're like, "Oh, he's never done that. Yeah, and he clearly can do this stuff. He's right. that good. He just hasn't ever needed to as." those other characters i always enjoy that i wonder if the pepsi plunge will return do you think he'll do the triple h pedigree and call it the pepsi plunge is that what he used uh, to do uh, yes then probably yes he will i wonder if that'll be back and i wonder if uh he'll wear the pepsi shorts and stuff like that again like he used to maybe like back in ring of honor days he's i mean he's got the tattoo right mm-hmm. As Dan Housen calls him, the Pepsi Man. <laughs> <Does he? laughs> yes. 
Did you see Dan House? Speaking of Dan House, it's not even in the rundown, but did you see his match against Dalton Castle where he they go to lock up, and instead of locking up, he takes a step back and goes, Curse! I put a curse on you! <laughs> I just saw a tweet from Dalton Castle that said, like, I want to forgive him, I just don't have the time or something like that. <laughs> put, the cur- put a curse on him instead of a, t- a tie-up. Very funny. Um, we also had... <laughs> overshadowed, completely overshadowed by this. SummerSlam and NXT happened the next following two days. SummerSlam on a Saturday. Yeah, so it was weird. Very weird. Yeah, very weird. Takeover on a Sunday. I think it was... Do you think it was well planned out by AEW to be like, you know what, let's go to Chicago the weekend that they're going. They're doing SummerSlam. We're going to yes. bring back Punk that weekend. Yes. Try to over, overshadow him. Probably, yeah. I would say... There's, there's, this is not, this has not come together in the last month at all. Yeah. This conversation has been going on for a long, long time. Mm-hmm. Probably. Because early, around the March time of year, when Leo Rush showed up for that one show, somebody asked Tony Khan, like, do you have any other surprises here? And he's like, oh, I've got massive surprises that you're not even going to believe. That's what he had said. Yeah. And so obviously he knew that early on that this was going to happen. Right. Just a matter of when. So you're saying Tony Khan is a better yes. owner? Oh, at least a better planner. Planner than Vince? Yeah. Because well, like, he does they, plan at least one week ahead is what you mean. He, <laughs> to, to know, you can't go to the United Center and sell it out unless you know <clears throat> Punk is coming. Yeah. Right? Maybe, maybe they could. You can do it once and let people think you're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, you could really piss people off if you do that. And all week long, it's just like, don't worry. <laughs> like people are people freaking are, out, and he's like, just like, don't, just don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> just, <laughs> just show up at the show. Just show up, and it'll be fine. <laughs> like, so obviously, he knew this was going on for a long, long fucking time. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was like. We're gonna. We have this rampage thing. We're gonna need numbers on it. We're gonna need to fuck up their shit yeah. slightly, leading into our next pay per view, which is gonna be. The I guarantee the that no, it's no. the fifth. Yeah. So I think we have to make picks on it next week. I guarantee. I was wondering why we weren't picking it tonight. I guess the I dates, think it's next the week. Dates line up then. Yeah. Um. There's de- there's no he definitely planned this all out. I mean, oh, yeah. well, well, well in advance. I think he's been talking to Punk, to be honest, from the beginning. I think he was, like, taking the temperature of him. I remember at one um, point come back for a long seeing Punk time. saying, like, no one has talked to me or something. Yeah, like, yeah. Cody hasn't reached out or something like right. that. Right. But I think he's ta- been talking to him forever. And he also said, Punk said, like, the pandemic slowed things down. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was, like, already in yeah, the bag. Working on it. Yeah. And, like, a green in principle, but, like... Not gonna do it until the timing was right. Because like, he even said, "Like I'm not doing this until like there's a full crowd or yeah, whatever." Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised oh, it if been he was such a waste if he came back in before. Yeah. The crowd. Right. And he had already waited seven years at this point. So, yeah. all right. How did SummerSlam and NXT shake out for picks? Uh, we can do that at the end. You can get ready. I have them ready. Brock okay. Lesnar came back. Care a lot less about that than I do about Ooh, CM Punk. Maybe he does look like Goro now. Brock, has been with said. his new ponytail. <laughs> he, after seeing a loss, he came out to challenge Roman at Survivor Series. I think that's going to happen. Probably. This was all laid out a long time ago. It or it's like, going to happen this Monday on Raw. I don't think so. Uh, Becky Lynch came back, which Yay. is cool. She was a fill-in, right? For she took over for Sasha Banks, but also tapped out Bianca Belair in two seconds. Yes, what? to win the title. She won the title. She won the title and tapped out Bianca Belair in like two seconds. Which we did not pick that match. And, uh, oh, God. I'm glad we didn't pick it because I would not have picked that So Becky. it's like cool that Becky's back, but like, That's oh, such a shitty God. way to do it. Why that way? Like, we have to ruin Bianca to get Becky over? Like, can't we just have Be- Bianca lose a regular match? I don't understand that. Unless they have some, like, underdog, like, plan for her to come back and apparently Becky plan. Becky coming back as a heel too that's the other thing they said she's a heel but she got cheered I assume yeah of she, course she got che- I oh, think they're so dumb I don't know so that's what I was thinking about with CM Punk is AJ Lee assuming she mm-hmm. comes around and joins women's division which maybe she won't but I could see that yeah 
she is a great heel, but sure. she's going to get huge pops when she comes back. Yeah, you got to start. So as you a have face. to, yeah, put her in as a face. Start things up as a face. Did she have a kid? Did Becky did have a kid? No, no. Uh, AJ oh, and, do- and no, Punk. AJ no? and Punk do not have a kid. Stupid Jaguars. Stupid Jaguars. Just feel goal. Um, preseason so important yeah the, uh, the edge the it's enigma edge it, team it, is. it might be yeah if you're a kicker and you miss you oh, get cut <laughs> the enigma edge came back as in doing a brood entrance he did a bloodbath on smackdown and then did a brood entrance that's weird all the nostalgia for edge what like do you think of this up through the ring or, or the through fire the, yeah, yeah the ring of fire uh, i think enigma edge is fine i don't I don't know why he would want to be the brood unless the ring back. I think it was Grail. just. I think it was just a like a one-off fun thing. Let's let's get Gangrel back. Why not? I'm in for Gangrel. I'm in. <laughs> Bring him back. I would. I honestly would be more excited to see Gangrel than to see Brock Lesnar. What? I mean, you can just go to Poughkeepsie and say Gangrel anytime <laughs> you want. Yeah, and I can right? go to WWE TV and see Brock Lesnar every six months. <laughs> <laughs> I like much. how you're like tepid on CM Punk, but excited about Gangrel. <laughs> I'm not excited about Gangrel. Just in WWE compared to Cena or Lesnar, you'd be more excited if Gangrel, Fat Gangrel, came back and like was managing Edge. Yeah, yeah, and was managing Edge, like oh, okay. rebrooding. Yes, rebrooding the rebrood. What was the website Tim had about the brood? Brood one, AngelFire dot com, <laughs> Brood One or something like that. Uh, our buddy Tim had a website about the brood. He loved him so much. Uh, other things on NXT: Walter lost the belt finally, which That's... we said was never going to happen. Yeah, yeah, and it happened the next week. <laughs> and we swept that Ilya Dragunov could not do it, and yeah. he did. He did win it. Uh, Samoa Joe won the NXT main title, which Think doesn't make any sense to me in storyline. Me and Wally knew that would happen. Yes. It makes no sense in storyline to me. It doesn't make any sense. He's but, no. William Regal's enforcer who now has the title. So what is his What is his character on TV? Is he back to just regular Samoa Joe now? Yeah. He's going to be the corporate is stooge. You know, Be a bad guy yeah. for Regal? Yeah. This it's is Vince's odd. NXT. Exactly. It makes no sense that it's Vince's NXT either because Vince fired Samoa Joe. But he likes him more than he likes Karrion Cross. <laughs> Even though Karen Cross is a big, strong dude. I don't understand. Who has an attractive blonde valet. Scarlet, who's not so going should with... should be Scarlet type is, of guy, but... Scarlet is not going with Karen Cross up. Scarlet oh, is no? not. Supposedly not. Which makes no fucking that sense. That doesn't make any sense. Because she's the best part of his act. Yeah. Like, he's a scary motherfucker. I get it. But she is makes it. She yeah, makes it she so good. she does most of the talking. Yeah. When she talks and he doesn't, and when she, like, drops... The everything was going well when she would bring the fucking clock out, the little uh, what do you call that thing with the, the sand, hourglass, the hourglass. Mm-hmm. Thank you, the clock with the sand. If she bring the hourglass out and just like put it in the ring, like you are next, we're gonna kill you. Yeah. Like that was perfect. Don't ever go away from that. You don't need to talk that much. But now he talks an awful lot. Anyway, Samoa Joe wearing. Samoa Joe, the dude, the wrestler, winning makes perf- perfect fine sense for him to win the IXT title. Fine. Samoa Joe winning in this character makes no fucking sense to me, but whatever. Uh, all right. We made many, many a pick. We did. How do we end up? We're going to go through every one of them one at a time? No, you can just give the final oh, okay. scores if you want. Well, on SummerSlam, we picked seven matches. Okay. Plus, we picked one that didn't happen, the Sasha. Right. That didn't match. count. Ryan, you got seven out of seven. Really? Mm. Wow. Uh, the Ghost and Wally got four out of seven. Oh. And I got three out of seven. Oh. Yeah, not great. Wow. Uh, seven out of seven. And Shit. he didn't get a lone wolf? Nope. No, you went straight seven. Wow. Yeah. No lone wolves. Damn. There's one That's, lone wolf of the weekend. That was me. It's not the best because wasn't Bill did NXT one time. He was like, I think I got six out of five. Seven ones. on a. F- yeah. Was it seven on a five or something? Something like that. Yeah, yeah you did. Like the impossible. Double lone wolf. Perfect score. Um, for NXT, uh, Ryan, you didn't do so well. You did... Yeah, bad. Uh, two out of five. Ooh. Ouch. The ghost refrained from picking. Yes. He also refrained from picking the Jinder versus Drew fight. I assume it was just too hard for him. <laughs> you just skip that one? Yeah. Uh, Wally, you got three out of five. Five. That's not bad. And okay. 
I got three out of five as well, but one of them was Cam Grimes obviously beating LA Knight for a long wow, wolf. A so you nights. only had... So I have four out of five is what oh, it turned okay, into. okay, okay. Wow. So for the... Out of a potential 12 total picks, Ghost seanced us four of them. While you and I got seven each, Marie, you got nine. Woo! Which on the year, heading into whatever a thing, AEW thing we're picking next... All out. We just said it like two minutes ago. Yep. yep. All out. Um, Am I first still? Wally, you have 26. Woo! Oh, my God. I have 26. Uh, what? Ryan, you have 25. Wow, Wait, and we, the ghost doesn't count. We were tied last week? Yeah. Oh, okay. And the ghost has 20. doesn't count. He has 20, and he hasn't barely picked anything? He's like, only missed not one round of picks so far this year. We haven't made that many picks. Yeah. yeah. This was our fifth like round of picks for the year. Wow. Since, I guess we got to pick way more, way more stuff. Or we don't. Oh, mm. <laughs> well, yeah. Less picks is probably better for me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Adam Cole had his match against Kyle O'Reilly. We haven't mentioned him yet. Oh, yes. You guys picked this he one. He lost. Right. He lost the three stages of hell match. Yep. And before this match happened, he was on his Twitch saying, basically, I'm never giving up Twitch. So if that tells you anything, I mean, think whatever you want to think. But I'm never giving up Twitch no matter what I do. Hmm. He's like, there's a lot going on with me right now, but just to let you know, I'm never giving up Twitch. So that tells me he's out of there. <laughs> he yeah. lost. Sounds like he lost yeah. Adam Cole, and he's not getting up Twitch. That tells me he lost he's to Kyle O'Reilly. Right. He okay. didn't lose he to himself. He lost. He lost to, <laughs> well, that was me just making sure I knew who yep. you were talking about. <laughs> right. He could be going up, and this will turn into a protracted fight about he didn't lose Twitch, but now they're trying to edit what he says and something like that. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Unfortunately, I'm afraid it's not the end for Adam Cole. You know what? If he's used well, fine. But, but go up to the main roster. If he's he, not going to be. He's not going to be. Well. He's, he's not just gonna not going to be. He's going to get one initial push. He'll get on the mic. He'll say something. It'll go over. And then Vince will look at him and go like, nope. One of the cool Squish things. Him. He's too small. And he'll get sat on by o- Osmos or whatever the dude's name is. O- almost. O- almost. Almost, almost, almost did it. Almost is going to s- literally squish him. Yeah. And that'll be the end of his. Then he'll go to 205 Live and run oh, there. Oh, God. One of the things that was fun about the Wednesday Night Wars is like there's not enough room for every single person to be on like every minute of every show. Yeah. So it was like, oh, it's nice that Adam Cole is on this other show doing good stuff. I can still watch him. Ha- it's, it's good. That yeah. was good. If they're all on one show, like all the best guys are on one show, they're not all going to get to do cool shit, I would assume. But he's best friends with Young Bucks, Adam Cole. He's not wife, but girl, long-term girlfriend, Britt Baker, is in AEW. Yep. Current champion? Who's the current women's champ. I would not be shocked at all if he doesn't, if he goes over there. I would not be shocked. No. If he's like, this place sucks, I'm out of here. If there's not going to be an NXT, then I'm not he staying. He has fought in New Japan. Sure. So maybe there's a chance we get to see him fight against uh, he was Time there. Bomb or something like that. Yeah. That would be maybe. fun. All right. So we'll see what happens there. Bill, it's time for a segment to be named later. Well, allow me to segue into talking about... Adam Cole in the Undisputed Era. Okay. Last week, we were not entirely clear on how old they were, and I was curious, so I looked into it, and yep. I was surprised yep. by how old they are. They're all old, them. right? 35, 36. This is both sides of it. I was surprised both ways. Okay. Bobby Fish is the oldest. In October, I believe, later this year, he's going to turn 45. 45. Wow. Yeah, older than I thought. Yeah. The one that didn't wasn't surprising is Roddy Strong just turned 38. Okay. That yeah. seems right. Kyle O'Reilly, how old do you think? 37. He's younger than we think, so he's probably 32. He's 34. Okay. okay so. Adam Cole, only 32. I would have guessed he was like 38. Yeah. He's been so around so long. As he's like, like not young, but he's got plenty of good years left, whatever he wants so to do. So many. Him. So many. But yeah, so I was surprised that Adam Cole is the youngest by a good amount. Right. He's younger than me now. Wow. Yeah. There you go. It's true. When LeBron James retires, then I'm going to feel real old because oh, Jesus. he was drafted. He was in our high school. He class. would have technically, we if we were into the NBA, we would have been in his, in his draft class. class. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to bother me when he retires. Yep. <laughs> 2008, 
2003, right? That was his draft class. That was yep. Yeah, when he went to Mello, the NBA as eighteen as an eighteen year old. Because so. Melo won this title in 2003, I believe, yeah. and then shortly the, thereafter, yeah. LeBron went got drafted. Yeah. Yep. So, okay. Any other segments? Uh, one got other segment. One? We were talking about how there's people that showed up in CML or from CMLL at Triple Mania. Three dudes showed we didn't up. Didn't know who they were. Yep. I looked them up. Still don't know who they were. They were Nueva Generation Diam- Dinamita. Mm. The Dynamite Generation? Something like that, yeah. Uh, they are Sansone, El Quatrero, and Forastero. Uh, but they were, prior to mutually parting ways with CMLL, mm. they were the trio's champions, and then they had to vacate it. So okay. they... It's not not a. It was some kind of big deal for them to show up. Okay. Like trip. I know trios is not like a huge belt, but it's more important in Mexico. It's more than, important yeah. in Mexico, in and they the were va- they like vacated the titles when they left. So like they were the champions until they left. Yeah. So probably that is a big coup for Triple A. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Time for everybody's favorite new weekly segment that's this not serious. very new anymore. How much is this crap going for on eBay? I don't know if this one's crap. Right now. <laughs> this looks like you could use it. Right now, Wally is up 6-4. to four. Bill closed the gap a little bit last week. Bill, you have the advantage. Wally's going first. The yeah. item. We'll give you a little background on this item. Real quick here. Ring used. Brutus the Barber Beefcake Scissors Signed. There's By a little scissors, bit. you of course mean hedge clippers. Hedge, hedge clippers. clippers, which is what he uses as scissors. Right. Good friend. Here's the description. A good friend of Brutus allowed me to buy his infamous barber scissors that he takes to every signing around the world. I know he had these and a red and white pair. This is red, white, and blue, I believe. But these are signed by him, and he also wrote on them ring use. So one blade has a signature, one says ring use. Great price, great piece for your collection. If you want to watch the videos back in the day, his scissors always had silver and black. Uh, The man had many colors, but these are the first ones he ever wrapped in red, white, and blue. I have videos I can send of him signing them and talking into cameras about the shears. And even more pictures. I can also set up... So it's legit. I can also set up personal messages of him telling you the history behind these barber... Scissors, if it's soon enough. This is a very poorly written uh, It deal sure here. is. Okay. WWF, red, white, and blue, Brutus the fucking barber beefcake shears. Ring used. Ring used. Also says Hall of Fame 2019 on him. Right, he is a Hall of Famer. Which, that's shocking, but yeah, of course he is. He's a Hall of Famer. Uh, Wally, it is on you to bid first. I think. And Bill will get the enough. advantage. I'll just go ahead and say you're not bidding enough. Bill will get the advantage. Because you could go cut your hedges with these. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say $175. Oh. Okay. Yes. $175. Bill? I was mistaken. $10. <laughs> what did you say? $10. <laughs> 10 <laughs> For <laughs> autograph shears? Yeah. Ring used? Yeah. You're the winner, Wally. I am the winner. You're the he winner. He wants more than $175? <laughs> a lot more. I mean, I guess given the description, he clearly thinks they're worth a ton. A lot more. If you had said 50 I would have been like, no, that's not enough. 175 is way too much. We'll, we'll update the score. Wally's up 7 to 4 now. Uh, Kicking okay. the Let's shit go with uh, $500. Way more. He wants a cool thousand for these? More. What? What? <laughs> Two. <laughs> Two thousand. Not quite two thousand. Okay. Fifteen hundred. Opening bid fifteen hundred dollars. Wow. Currently no bids. <laughs> 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 but he wants fifteen hundred dollars. See, I even thought I went too low with one seventy five. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say fifty and I was gonna say it's way too low. Sixty dollars. Hundred smackaroos. Oh. This guy's up eBay and late. He posted this Thursday at 2.12 a.m. Must have, wow. like, gotten to some serious gambling debts or something <laughs> yeah, overnight. Maybe West Coast, it was yeah. not Only bad, 11. But, yeah. But still. There you go. 1,500. 1,500. That's uh, Rick is to get these for you for your birthday. <laughs> fucking barber beefcake. All <laughs> right. A spicy meatball. <laughs> that is a spicy meatball. Uh, time for a, a review. Oh, yes. Our weekly review this week is 
Stephen Amell. We're keeping the Stephen Amell train going. Yep. It's a movie called Code 8. It's yes. on Netflix. While you picked it, let's hear about Code 8. Yes. Yeah, so it's got his younger brother, Robbie Amell. Or cousin. His cousin. His younger cousin, Robbie Amell, is the main character, whose name is Connor. So we start with a montage of news programs talking about there's people who have powers. Uh, there's also this weird drug called Psych that is made from the spinal fluid of these powered people as well. Which is gross, but kind of a cool th- idea. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we see Connor, who wakes up his mother, who's sleeping on the couch. She notices some things, some bl- weird blue things on her hands. Um, they definitely have money problems because we see a bunch of bills. This, uh, Connor notices the blue things on her hands, and she, he says that she's getting worse. Yep. Yeah. He goes to a job interview, which then makes him late for his construction job. And while he's working on the construction job, it seems like everybody there has powers and they're using them. We do see like a quick like montage at the beginning about like psych and all that stuff. And then it shows like a history of these powered people. At first, people liked them because they could do construction and they're very good. Yeah. And now people don't like them anymore and they don't trust them. Yeah. Because um, so, they were fucked over by contractors. Yeah. And they fought uh, back. Okay. Um. We see a police drone flying through the air, and it shows up, with, and the cop car pulls up alongside, and <clears throat> they're there to investigate people who are using their powers. They're not supposed to be doing that. Uh, if they don't have a permit for their powers, they can't work. One of the guys gets arrested, and Connor mouths off a little bit, which distracts one of the officers. The guy uses his powers, and he starts to run away to... I think they called them guardians, two like yes. robots. Yes. The robots. Yeah, the, yeah, these guys are sweet. They, they are cool. I like they, the way they drop, just like onto it, one knee. Yeah, <laughs> drop down from the drone, and they shoot and kill the powered guy who was running away. Who did like fire? Throw a fireball, a Jerry Lawler yes. fireball at the cop. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, next scene, we see police and some guardians uh, from the drones sweep through. The an apartment building. They arrest one guy and find a secret room with powered people being drained of their spinal fluid for the the psych. Uh, then we see a police chief having a press conference about psych. Connor visits his mother at work, and she had an accident accident because of her her cold powers. Uh, he gets mad at her boss, who's being a dick to her, so she gets fired. She needs to. It sounds like she needs to start chemo. But they don't have the money to cover. Yeah. At one, later, they do say, like, you a need brain tumor. tumor. Yeah. Um, next day, he's waiting for for day work. They see a van pull up, and his friend warns him, don't don't mess with these guys. They're, they're, they're involved with psych and stuff like that. So they pull, the van pulls up and says they're looking for an electric class two. Connor stands up, and he asks for $200 up front. And Stephen Amell, whose character's name is Garrett, uh, agrees. So Connor gets in and he puts on a construction safety vest. And they specifically say we need an electrical or whatever. That we need electric. a guy with electric powers. Mm-hmm. Level two. So they get to this place. Um, they hand him some bolt cutters and he tries. he's supposed to use them on the electric fence. He puts the bolt cutters down and just uses his hands to short it out instead. Uh, the van pulls inside and they start packing up these giant barrels. When a security guard catches them, instead they lock him up in a garbage bin. They get away, but police drones are searching for them. They pull off the, ro- the, the road and pull off the red painting on the van to show a white van underneath, which then fools the drones and they get away. Uh, they pull into a garage and get brought to the boss, who is Mr. Sutcliffe. He can read my... He's having a, a meeting with, I don't know, some other guy who's supposed to be a bad guy. Sutcliffe can read minds, so he has he reads the mind of the... Shoot, what was their name? Copperhead. Copperhead was the, the one in the corner who is going to slice him up and stuff like that. Something like that. So, where did I go? Is Copperhead the one that gets killed later? Yes. So, so then after uh, the other bad guy and Copperhead leave, Connor meets Sutcliffe, and he's shown around the club by Nia, who 
just seems to be Suckliff's piece of ass. Suckliff tells has a conversation with Garrett and tells him that they can't pay him right now, but he's onto something big. Uh, Garrett tells Connor about another job coming up, and it's a bigger it's going to be a bigger payday. So Connor goes home, talks to his mom. She got her old job back at the grocery store. Um, we see the next day cops are at the site where they stole the barrels. They start looking for a strong electric because they know they needed an electric to get through the fence. The next day, Connor gets picked up by Garrett and his crew instead of going with the construction crew. They're all eating breakfast and Connor tells him tells them his mom is sick which is why he's working with them garrett likes his answer and tells uh, brings him outside uh and he forces him to short the alarm uh shorten a car a car alarm so they can steal it he tells connor about the bank job and about him getting twenty five thousand dollars for for pulling this job um so he stops the car alarm and they drive away there's a montage of them doing some sketchy stuff and practicing his skills uh so connor gets very powerful very very good with his skills uh at home with his mom he tells her he got he got the job from the interview lies yep you lying sack of shit lying to your mom we see the the cops the two detectives one's name is park i think yes Um, yes I actually liked him a lot. He, he he looks familiar, sometimes. and yeah. I can't remember. He's in what, stuff. He's yeah. in stuff, and I liked it, the, what he did in this show, or in this movie. But he... Do, 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 they're staking him out because they know about his money trouble, so they think he's a good candidate to be you know, the one mm-hmm. in Garrett's crew. Uh, Connor and Garrett talk about the recon on the bank. So then the next thing we see is the crew, his crew going into the bank and taking people hostage so they can get into the vault. They do get into the vault, but the re- the huh. it's, it's <laughs> practically cleaned out. He's in the Fast and Furious movie. He is. He's it? Han in Fast okay. and the Furious. I thought so it was him. Han. He's in the he's, third movie. Oh, he's, he's the drift. He's, he's the, the guy drift? in Tokyo yeah. Drift who comes back. And then dies. dies and then all the back. other movies are have to happen before Tokyo yeah. Drift. <laughs> oh, okay. But then he comes back to life in the last one, doesn't he? Right, because he's not dead or something. Yeah, know. there's some weird fuck, bullshit where they just bring him back. Fast and furious. He's, a, he's good in this, though. He's, he's a good actor. Um, so they get into the vault, and it's supposed to have $500,000, but it's only got about 50000 They ask the, the girl where the rest of the money is, and she says that it's already been moved. They move it every week at 4, 4 p.m. on a Friday. So... They go out the back door and immediately get stopped by a drone. Uh, just before the Guardians get deployed, Connor takes down the drone with his electric powers. Which seems to like freak the police out. Like, oh my god, somebody's powerful enough to like take a drone out? Yeah. Oh, shit. Um, they get back to Suckliff, and Garrett tells him what happened. Um, Do they have to take like the, the van... <laughs> plastic apart every time they get <laughs> every time they get seen by a drone like or like commit a crime they have to like change the, the rip off the, the, paint. the wrapping and the paint on the van i thought that was a really good idea i though. did like it too. like that's smart yeah. yeah every time like this movie starts and i'm like oh god i can't believe we're watching this crap and then you know something will happen like oh that was kind of cool yeah there was a lot of that like oh it was, ca- like, was kind of cool at first i was like this is actually pretty good and then I'm like all right they're not yeah what what are they doing now? Um, so they're back at the club because that's where Sutcliffe hangs out. It's his club, um, and we see. Which I was trying to figure out how, what I knew him from. I don't think I knew him. I knew him from he was in a show called Frontier, which is Aquaman, except in like the what's the dude's name that plays Aquaman? Jason Momoa. Yeah, mm. yeah. He plays like a fur trader up in like. Canada. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And th- he plays a guy named Pond, who is like the evil rich guy who owns a bunch of like fur trading companies and stuff. Pond plays his like lover slash like he murders people for his like boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> He's like a crazy killer slash like the boyfriend of the rich guy. <laughs> uh, so at the club, we see somebody start harassing one of the strippers, which causes a tr- distraction when we see where we see Copperhead, um, she goes in to attempt to kill Sutcliffe. 
uh, Connor steps in and stops them. And Sutcliffe's Suck- guy, the, I think his name was Rhino. I looked at I looked at the the mm. IMDb, and it looked like his character name was Rhino. But mm. um, Rhino killed Su- uh, Copperhead. Garrett and Sutcliffe then argue about what they should do. Uh, Nia takes some psych, and Connor fi- when and and then Connor finds her. They talk a little bit, and she heals the knife wound that's on his arm. Uh, she's you. She heals Sutcliffe and his crew because she has to pay off a debt for her father. Yeah. So they keep calling her a junkie, and we find out like later why she uses it. But she like is there a because he gives her drugs, but also because she like needs to be there for her dad or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, Connor goes home, and his mom had found his stash of money from all the jobs he's been doing. <clears throat> so she confronts him about it. They argue about the money, and she has an episode and passes out. It is Rhino, by the way. Oh, okay. So oh, yeah, okay. There he is. She has a brain tumor, which is causing her to lose control of her abilities. So Connor talks to the doctor for a little while, uh, and then he goes to the nurse who runs him through the costs of the operation. This whole thing is like frightening because it's real yeah <laughs> like, that's the fr- seven thousand dollars for uh the, the yeah. week for the, the recovery the money five thousand dollars the first five thousand of anesthesia is covered but then you have to pay the rest which yeah. anesthesia is fucking ridiculously expensive yeah. this this is like real life it's yeah. very fucking scary especially yeah. if you don't have a j- job and you don't have insurance yeah. holy shit you're basically um, dead so Connor leaves the hospital and he gets picked up by Park and his his buddy his dete- his partner and they interrogate him. Park almost gets him to help them, but then his partner just is a douchebag and talks too much and he pisses Connor off. Um the partner wants to frame Connor for having uh, crap ton of psych in his house or something like that but Park ignores him and he lets Connor go yes uh, Garrett picks him up on the street they go to Sutcliffe and form a plan to steal the pure psych which the cops um, they each week they do a, yeah. a run a psych run where they go destroy all the psych that they've they seized drive it and burn it yeah what does psych actually do do we ever find that out no it's no. just like they say at one point that like if you don't have powers, it makes you feel like you have powers or something, but they don't really give specifics. But the one chick who has powers takes like... It looks like like just a heroin kind of thing. It's like a heroin thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> Garrett wants to... Okay, so they're going to try to steal the, the psych from the cops. Connor says that Suckliff gets the psych, but he gets Nia... Uh, Garrett wants to be partners 50-50 after they pay off the debt. So they all go over the plan on how to steal it. Connor doesn't want them to kill anyone. Connor and Nia then talk, and she says he only wants her because she's a healer, which makes him no different than anybody else. Now we're at the day of the heist, and they're blocking off the street um, where the police usually uh, drive down. Police mount up, and they have two guardians on either side of the truck. The drones are following overhead, but they stop because they're approaching a no-fly zone. The cops hit the roadblock and radio it in that they're going a different way. The crew starts following the truck. Garrett backs up a garbage truck into the road and starts acting like a bad driver, trying to trying to move it. Um, Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, just can't can't figure out how to turn the thing around. <laughs> like, move the fuck out of the way or gonna arrest you. Eventually Connor hits the truck with his electricity and fries fries it and two of the robots which had still been attached to the truck. Garrett then uses his powers to hold the other two robots down on the ground until Co- Connor can fry them too. Is this the first time we see Garrett? No, no. During the training, he he moves stuff with his hands. So yeah, like, he's telekinetic. Yeah. Oh, the first time we see his powers. Yeah, uh, we see him at, at when they're stealing the, stealing the barrels too, because he yeah. pulls the guy's gun from him. Right. Yep. Um. So the crew starts breaking into the truck, and take the uh, take the police officers hostage. They start taking the the handcuffs 
as you do with like valuable stuff you have the the suitcase or whatever right they're handcuffed to the briefcase handcuffed to their wrist right um we see one of the drones decides to enter the no fly zone Sutcliffe's crew then executes the cops and starts shooting at Garrett's crew kill the girl kill yep they kill Maddie uh the drone drops two guardians who shoot the rest of Sutcliffe's crew dead well, uh, which was only two guys. Garrett and Connor take the mute guy, Freddy, who has been shot. He was fun. He was, he was pretty cool. Um, we see Sutcliffe back at his base with the psych. Nia asks where the others are, so Sutcliffe just gives her some psych, and she says her dad still owes him a lot of money, and she takes the psych and goes away. Connor and Garrett find a safe spot to pull over, um, but... Poor Freddy's dead. They get in an argument about why things went badly. Connor says that Garrett got greedy and, and got played by uh, Sutcliffe. The two detectives are talking to the chief about having Connor in custody and letting him go. And then, even though he's probably he, he should know that he's very much wanted by the police, he goes to visit his mom in the hospital again. She wants him to you know just let her let her go but he wants to keep fighting to save her life. Um, Park goes to visit his, I'm assuming, ex-wife, but it didn't really say. Um, visit yeah. his ex-wife and get his daughter. His daughter has powers, and she's afraid that her parents are going to give her away. And as Park is talking to his daughter, Connor has his construction buddy give him a piece of paper with directions on where to meet Connor. Uh, he wants to give Sutcliffe over to um, Park. Then we see the drones are staking out Sutcliffe's place. The cops begin moving in uh, to take down Sutcliffe at his club. We see him coughing while playing pool, so he forces Nia to heal him, and she starts coughing. Uh, cops breach the club. Sutcliffe, Nia, and, his, and Rhino go through a tunnel in the basement to get to the gar- to a garage uh, and away from the cops. Garrett comes out of nowhere and shoots Sutcliffe and then shoots the bot uh, shoots Rhino. Rhino then starts fighting Garrett and Connor comes out of nowhere and hits him. They both seem to be getting their butts kicked by this one guy. Garrett stabs. Yeah, this dude is like impossible to harm. It appears is his yeah. superpower. He like stops bullets with his body. Yeah. Uh, Garrett stabs um, Rhino in the eye with what looks like a like a metal stake, and then Connor electrocutes it, which finally kills him. Um, Sutcliffe's been on the ground because he's been shot, so Nia takes the gun away from him, and then Garrett uses his powers to choke him to death. Garrett takes the psych and. Pieces out. Connor asks Nia to heal his mom and then she can go, but she shows him a, the cut on her arm because whenever she heals somebody, she, she like, takes it on. Yeah, she has to take on what's being healed. So whatever it is, she keeps sucking out of Sutcliffe's lungs. It's probably smoke. Like just is clearly bad for her. Oh yeah, which is yeah why she's taking so many drugs. She feels like <laughs> shit all the time. Um. So. Connor brings her to the hospital anyways because he pulls a gun on her and tells her to save his mom. So she starts healing her and then we get a montage of Connor thinking about all his memories with his mom and he stops her. She wakes up just in time to see him and says his name and then she dies. We see Park and his partner find Sutcliffe's dead body. We see Garrett has the psych again. Uh, And then Connor pulls up to the police department and gives Nia the truck. He apologizes to her and tells her he's going to turn himself in. Um, What did he do that was so wrong? He assisted in those cops getting getting killed, I guess. But he didn't really want them to die. But he was there. Yeah. He was there, I guess. He's part of the robbery or whatever that led to that. And they also robbed a bank and robbed the construction site. Before yeah, that, I guess. But. Um, we see the police chief gets a press conference about a safe city, 
and pow- people with powers have been outlawed now. <laughs> they just straight up outlawed the use of powers. Garrett meets up with the other bad guy, and he pays off the old debt, and he wants to set up a new arrangement. Yeah, so he's not really a good guy either, because no. he's like, here, the debt's paid off, and the guy's like, all right, cool. And he's like, oh, there's still money to be made, or business to be done, or something. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to take over now as yeah, the guy. Yeah, he's just going to be bad. And then Connor visits his mother's grave, because apparently he's not in jail. Don't know how. But Nia goes and visits her dad in jail, and that's that's the end. Doesn't so the seem ending, like a ending place, wasn't great. Yeah. Does not seem like a place or a society where you would be allowed to go visit your mother's grave after you turn yourself in for high crimes yeah, or whatever, like, right? Maybe he's like, I'm he going to away for a while. Like, all right, yeah, you're going to jail. Which he would never have been able to leave the, the, right. the no, yeah. right. police That's, department. Yeah, why and was then, he leaving? He's not going to be able to make bail. The relationship right. was that he had with the girl where he just is like, I don't actually care about you. I just want you to kill my mom. Yeah. And, but then, like, I don't know. They're suppo- they were weird about have, it. Yeah. yeah. She, she couldn't do it. She was like, I can't do it. She, you'll kill me. Right? Doesn't she say that? She's like, you yeah. could kill me. And then she starts trying to do it. And he, like, it is killing her. Like, pulls her away after his mom like, yeah. is basically dying, anyways. Yeah. And the, the whole thing with Garrett at the end, it definitely seems like they wanted to leave it open for a sequel. Yeah. It's funny you say that. Oh, no. Deadline. Late earlier this year. Sequel. Or Code 8. It's going to be nine? called Code... <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I don't think it's called Code 9. The se- it's, called, it's called Code 8 2, I believe. Code the sequel, 8 2. That's even dumber. The yeah. sequel follows the journey of a teenage girl fighting to get justice for her slain brother at the hands of corrupt police officers. After becoming a witness to the cover-up, she herself becomes a target and needs to enlist the help of ex-con... Robbie Amell yep. and his former partner Stephen Amell. All Together, right. they face a highly regarded, well-protected police sergeant who uses every tool to present himself from being exposed. That's totally gonna be Davis. Is that the other? I think that's the, the partner. I think that was yeah. the name of the partner. Uh, yeah. The director, the Amells, and the writer are all back. Uh, the end of this better be Stephen Amell, like being a bad guy and screwing this girl over or something because yeah code he eight. showed himself to be a bad dude yeah right he's not a good guy code eight two number <laughs> one raised 2.5 million from indiegogo backers yeah. second most ever for a crowd funded original film and then i think it made like 170,000 or something because of covid uh well no it came out in 2019 so technically yeah. Not COVID. Pre COVID. Hmm. Even worse then. Uh, was it out in theaters? I assume it one came out them. in 2019. Huh. Limited Probably theaters. at least one of them. Probably limited theaters. I thought it was just a straight to Netflix kind of thing. Like a Netflix. Uh, owned Netflix it. owns the rights to it, so they'll be putting it out. So maybe it didn't come out in theaters. It just was on Netflix. But how would you determine how much money it made? That's true. Though? If it's a Netflix thing, I don't know how yeah. they determine that. Obviously, it's good enough for them to views, buy the sequel. Probably an amount of views. Yeah. It's good, good, it's but good enough Netflix for them to buy But Netflix is weird about what gets renewed and what doesn't. Oh, my God. Yes. Sure, they sure yeah. are. <laughs> Fucking damn it. They sure are. Right now, there's nobody else attached as actors to it. Let's do another Although season of I, Iron Fist. I thought I saw somewhere that they're interested in uh, bringing back Park. Oh, no, they're, they're not doing it. Code 8 was also, did you know this? Code 8 was also a short Yes, because I was thinking about making us watch the short. Code 8 is a short that came out three years before the movie came out. I assume it's a situation of like a, here's a potential movie we could make. Here's the short. And do you want to make it based off that? Only 10 minutes. It's listed as a desperate young man clash uh, with superpowers, clashes with military police force after committing a petty crime. So it's like a simpler. Yeah, it's got all. It's got most of the people in it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, kind of weird. Not terrible. Ha- not half bad. Not great. But not half bad. And literally, Rotten Tomatoes. I think I read. Is like it's like split right down the middle. It's like a fifty percent movie. Like fifty percent people like it. So. 
That's code eight. Go check it out. It's only a buck thirty-eight. It's not very long. It's a quick movie. Yeah, it was very short. Yeah. It's a quick movie. So not bad. Not one of your worst. No. Definitely was, not one of your best, but not not horrible. It was an average movie. It was something yeah, to watch. It's, like, it's fine. It's not it's got the, the those guardian dudes are cool. Mm-hmm. Once we some of the cool. some of the things were smart. Some Once of the we things were cool. Got moving. It just it felt was, like they didn't know how to wrap up the story. Yeah. yeah. So they just rushed it at the. I end. was wondering about that. It feels like a TV show, like a very well funded TV show that's like gonna have. This is the hour long pilot, and we're uh, gonna have oh, yeah. another episode. That's kind of what it felt like. Yeah. But it's not terrible. All right, Wally. It's time for a top five. Yep. What you got? I'm gonna do the top five. Things that Aaron Sorkin has written. Okay. For. So, number five, I haven't actually seen it, but I've heard really good things about it. The Trial of the Chicago Seven. Okay. I haven't Never seen, seen it. Either. it. The number four is The Social Network. Don't care to see nope. it. Seen Bored it. by it. I, I enjoyed it. I, I liked it. Number three is A Few Good Men, obviously. The mm. thing I like most about Social Network was the music in it. Trent Reznor had great. did it all the music in it. Never yeah. interests me. I never wanted to see it, even when everybody said it was good. It was. It was good. Uh, number two is the newsroom, which is a TV show. I heard it's good. Never oh, very it. good. Didn't very watch good. West Wing either. It didn't last that long. Though. Number one is the West Wing. Obviously, <sighs> West Wing. Newsroom was only three seasons long. Oh, no, more the, than I thought. The third, Daniels, right? the third season was only six episodes. Wow. But it was a really, really good show. What That's was number three on your list? Number three was A Few Good Men. What was the real? What is A Few Good Men? I don't know. You can't handle it. the truth. Oh, it was pretty good. Good. Yeah, it was pretty good. What was the shitty Saturday Night Live? Like Thirty Rock had like a competitor at the exact same time. Sorkin wrote something about Sat- it was like a Saturday Night Live show and it was like behind the scenes. The Larry Sanders show. No, that show is fucking incredible. Though. Studio sixty on the Sunset Strip. Yes, that's it. Oh. It is terrible, <laughs> terrible. I, w- I want to see Sports Night to see if that's. I like Sports too. Night. Sports Night was based off it. Never saw it. Dan Patrick and Keith Olbermann. Okay, but I yeah I, I recently rewatched the the newsroom and that's yeah. what made me and that was like you know what I'm gonna start rewatching the the West Wing too. I think sports somebody has Sports Night out there. Some streaming service must have. Well, it. both of the newsroom and West Wing are both on HBO Max. Did Tom right. Cruise walk around with a baseball bat and a few good men? They always just like walk around holding a baseball bat. No, I don't think so. No, isn't that? He was um, a military guy. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't yeah. the baseball bat in um, "Show Me the Money"? Jerry Maguire. Yeah, maybe. That would make more sense. All right, a few quick hitters here before we get out of here. Bray Wyatt apparently going to AEW, and I believe. Are you it. excited about it? Nah, not really. Don't, no, don't like Bray Wyatt. He's Unless fine. They have to come up with a different. Yeah, he's something start totally over. different. I'm telling you. He's going to be Bray Wall Street. Oh. And his dad is definitely showing up with both of the boys. Oh, my God. Bo's coming back. I like I liked that pitch of three weeks ago or whenever he did it. But Is it possible that mm. they're getting too many people? Yeah, for sure. You think Bray Wyatt would be they the lead? Friday show. So they're trying to be the BCW right down to the end where they like drive themselves <laughs> out of town. You think Bray Wyatt will be the leader of Dark Order? The new leader of Dark Order? Are they... I thought the new leader They're was all good. Uno. No? It's not really. Are they looking for a new leader? I haven't been. Is, okay. Is that the Brody Lee's people? Yeah. Would it make Have sense they been doing... I was... feel like they're not doing anything with Dark Order, though. They are. They're good guys that help out Hangman Page. So they don't really have so their own storyline, then? I mean, they help out Hangman Page. They're buddies with okay. him. Are they faces, then? Yeah, they're faces now. Huh. So he could return them to the roots or something Maybe. Like that? Turn on Hangman? Maybe. Bray versus Hangman, yep. That'd be fun. I could see that, actually, yeah. Zicky Dice, our ghost friend's favorite. Zicky Dice will be an impact. You excited for he Zicky Dice? He an impact. That's where he belongs. What about Ruby Riot coming to AEW? That would be good. Sh- supposedly showing up at the New She's York show. They could use it in the women's division. They certainly say. could use her, I would say. A fantastic person, apparently. Everybody loves her, so she would... That's one thing we didn't talk about, Punk. He's kind of a fucking dick. Yeah. And this this locker room is not that. Like, apparently, it's the it's a really 
good place. People aren't stepping on each other's toes. They all get along. You know, they all kind of hang out together for the most part. You bring it in a known dick. Like, for, for all the good stuff about punk, you're bringing in a fucking dick. Yeah. And I'm not talking about the suing of Cole Cabana, which is very bizarre on its own, because it's like, yep. hey, come air your grievances on my podcast. Go ahead. Oh, well, that got me in trouble, so I'm going to sue you for that. Well, no, I gave you a platform. Like, yeah. I was trying to be a good friend. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, when we were upstairs, I did. I asked if it could be a problem with I, him coming in and getting real heat with other people in the maybe. back. Maybe. So. There's also, like, I'm a punk fan, but I, I heard the story from uh, Hornswoggle. Hornswoggle was on a shoot thing, and he said he had was very good friends with punk and sent him a text after he left saying, like, do you have so-and-so's number, some, like, mutual friend in wrestling? And he was like, I disown you as a friend. Like, I'm so furious you would even ask me about anything about wrestling. And Hornswoggle was like, I just want the person's number. I'm not trying to, like, yeah. use you to get booked or something. Like, I just want that person's phone number. I don't have it anymore. And he, like, totally writ- wrote him off and would never talk to him ever again after that. So it's like, he's – that's not great if you're bringing that into a, a locker room. So, I don't know. We'll see about that. Nick Khan, your boy. I don't know why he's my boy. Well, you hate NXT, and so does he. Okay. The NXT rebrand is coming in two weeks. There's no more full sale. That's done. That's full dumb. sale thing sure. is done. Yeah. You just go right to the CWC. Which is so whatever. yep. Which is so stupid That's because really dumb. full sale literally giving you camera operators and like people to do those jobs. Yep, and a crowd that's a, into it. Yeah, and a crowd that's into it, but no longer. And the dark sets of NXT, like how they light the yeah. show, oh. specifically light the show differently than the other main product shows. So it so looks now it's different. Gonna cut, yeah. It's going to be color. exactly the same. Yeah, as lit exactly the same as uh, all the main product shows. Of course. So we're in for some real trouble. And he also was talking about how like we need to get rid of the indies. Yeah. All the indie guys need to we go. We don't want to no do that again. Indies. Where we're actually like a popular thing. Mm. We don't want to redo that. We want to oh do something totally God. new. Yikes. By getting guys who don't know how to wrestle. Yep. Uh, Karen Cross looks stupid. That's the last one I've got for quick hitters. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. He <laughs> dressed up as like a medieval. He nah, legitimately, he, like he, looked, he looks like... Uh, mm. Let me look at it again. He looks he like looks. Full, uh, he's cosplaying as like a uh, barbarian. He looks like uh, the Holy Grail, like one of those knights, the knights who say knee. He looks yeah. like a knight who says knee, no but, longer the but in like a BDSM knee. outfit. Yes, <laughs> we're no longer the knights who say knee. We're the knights who say. <laughs> you hated that movie. You said you watched it, it recently, you don't like it. There are funny parts, but overall, it's not Full very Monty. good. The, not very good. The ending is just. It's bad. It's very bad. It's a bad yeah. ending. What do you think of the Blazing Saddles? Then? Also bad. I didn't like that ending also either. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Blazing Saddles, once they leave the West, is stupid. When yeah. they go into like the studio and stuff? Monty Python's Holy Grail. That's what he looks like. All right, next review. Bill? Well, let me give you guys a choice. Well. I'm going to stick with Stephen Amell, as you told me I needed to do. I did not say that. <laughs> At the beginning of the show, you basically said, I said sticking with I this. I did not say no. So do we want to pick Heels Back Up, or do you want that to be your thing? I don't care. Oh, shit. I don't, I don't mind That came out yesterday, up. didn't it? Yeah, there was another one. <laughs> we can do another Heels, or I have the another Stephen finish. Amell we can do. You have another Stephen Amell we can do? Stephen Amell we can do? Yeah. I don't care. You can pick up, pick back up on heels if you want to. I'll let that be your thing, I guess. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I don't we'll care. Because there's, I don't know if we're gonna do all the episodes or how that's gonna work. So I wasn't sure about that. I was like fifty-fifty on it. Like, if it's fun, then eventually, yes, we'll go. We'll try to do them all. Because as long as Wally has stars, then we can do that's it. That's true. But yeah, I don't know. It's up to you. If you want right. to do it, go ahead. I don't. I won't be offended. We're gonna instead watch a oh, show boy. that he was on many years ago. Yeah, it's called uh, New Girl. Oh, I like New Girl. He was on New Girl. Two episodes. Love New Girl. Like that season show. one. Oh wow! Season one. So it's really different from the like the real New Girl. Uh, season one of New Girl. There's. I have a lot of New Girl takes because I. 
I, I, I think it would have been better it. with less of her in it. <laughs> oh, her her roommates are so much better. Oh, so great. If she has... Schmidt, Nick. Like, yeah, Schmidt, very funny. Yeah. Nick, very funny. Both the other guys, Oh funny. yeah. And uh, Coach De- was funny, Dex? but then he was gone. Like and then what was that dude's name? De- Lamar Morris. I forget his character name, but Lamar I Morris. I with a D. It's funny. been a while since I watched that. He's we'll good. be watching season one, episode nine, called the twenty third, mm-hmm. and episode thirteen called Valentine's Day. He plays Cece's girlfriend or boyfriend, excuse me. Cece, oh, Cece, yes. Cece's boyfriend. Love Cece, the, the friend of uh, yes, Jess. Jess's friend. Jess. He apparently. I like that show a lot. Appears a twice show. as her boyfriend, so we'll be watching those episodes. Okay, I like it. I, I bet he. I bet he's a dick. Oh, he's um, got to be a dick. I'm definitely, definitely sure he's a dick. Cece only dated. He's a dicks, model right? photographer. Uh, yeah. He probably cheats on her. Doesn't like to have much fun. Oh boy! All right, I like it. New girl. That's it. That's the end of this episode. New girl. We'll see what CM Punk does next week. NXT is gonna have a totally different look soon. We're picking uh, all out next week. I thought we were doing that tonight. I didn't. Nope. Apparently, <laughs> time is still not right in my head. Time is still a flat circle. All right. That's it. Peace out. See ya. See ya.